Welcome to our Easter sunrise service. If you have your program, please open to page one and let's stand. Uh, page two. He is risen. He is risen indeed. In the name of the only true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the God of our salvation who has given us this glorious day. O oh, come, let us worship the Lord, for he is risen indeed. O oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the God of our salvation. Christ has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. He has offered himself as payment for our sins. Our Lord has revealed the power of his saving love. He has gained the victory over Satan for us. Today, Death and the grave are defeated. Our God has brought life and immortality to life. Let us now worship our living Lord. Let us join our voices to sing his praises. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please be seated for the hymn, and once again you'll get to stand when we sing the fourth verse. Oh, 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 oh,
this is the message we heard from him and declare to you God is light in him there is no darkness at all now if we claim to have fellowship with him yet walk in the darkness we lie and do not live by the truth and if we claim to be without sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us therefore let's confess our sins father I have sinned against you and am no longer worthy to be called your child yet in mercy you sacrificed your only son to purge away my guilt for his sake O oh God be merciful to me a sinner and in the joy of your Holy Spirit let me serve you all my days if we confess our sins God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness so upon this your confession I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be Jesus. to God. Amen. Amen. O God, you made the dawn of this most holy day shine with the glory of our Lord's resurrection. Now grant that we who have been raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit may worship you in sincerity and truth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we draw our attention to the Word of God on this Easter morning. The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. It is his wonderful gospel, gospel proclamation of the salvation that is ours. In that day you will say, I will praise you, Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Now in that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim his, that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord. For he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. The Word of God. Let's sing the psalm together. the works of your hands, O Lord. I lift up my voice in song, I sing for joy. Sing to the Lord, you saints of His, praise His holy name, for His anger lasts only a moment. But his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. At the works of your hands, O Lord, I lift up my voice in song, I sing for joy. To you, O Lord, I called. To the Lord I cried for mercy. Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my help. You turn my wailing into dancing that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hearts of your hands, O Lord, I lift up my voice in song, I sing for joy. If you stop breathing, then your heart will stop beating, and then you'll die. But if there is a conqueror over death, then you can have a spiritual heartbeat and you can be alive in the Spirit of God. And so the Apostle Paul shows us that if Jesus has taken the sting out of death, that we not fear anything. From 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the resurrection chapter. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we'll all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable. See, they can't ever go away. Imperishable. And will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable. And the mortal, well, with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Well, the sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. <laughs> but thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of God. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ... All will be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia. Sing to Jesus. Is a scepter. His a throne. Alleluia. Is a triumph. Is a victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion. Thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, has redeemed us by his blood. Please stand for the gospel. It is the resurrection story recorded by St. John in chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been, rem <clears throat> been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached their t the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed they still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. And now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? I've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they put him. And at this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? 
And thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if, if, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I've seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated for our hymn of the day, 720. Christ Jesus lay in death's strong band. Christ Jesus lay in death's strong bands For our offenses given But now at God's right hand he stands And brings us life from heaven Therefore let us joyful be and sing to God right thankfully Loud songs of Alleluia 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 No son of man could conquer death such ruin, sin had wrought us. No innocence was found on earth that therefore death had brought us into bondage from old. Never grew more strong and bold and held us as its captive. Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ Jesus, God's own Son, came down His people to deliver. Destroying sin, he took the crown From death's pale brow forever Strip of power, no more it reigns An empty form alone remains Its sting is lost forever Alleluia, Alleluia. It was a strange and dreadful strife when life and death contended. Peace be to you. Amen. The word of God from Luke chapter 24. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. 
In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words, the word of God. Lord, may the meditation of our hearts and the words of my mouth be pleasing in your sight. Amen. Your Christian friends, it was about 17 years ago on a Saturday morning around 10 o'clock that I got into Lauren Hunsberg's car for the first time. We were going on follow-up calls. Used to be the practice that we would go on Saturday mornings. We'd drive around and we'd try to find people that had visited the church member over, and no, you don't, over in the storefront. And uh, we would follow up on them and we had just a whole stack of papers, uh, three whole punched papers, and they were from a binder. And, and uh, we would get those and then we'd grab the maps co and uh, we would go on a hunt. See, almost like an Easter egg hunt looking for... Uh, follow-ups that had come and visited us at church. Well, then things improved because we went from the Matsco, which wasn't always the best thing to have, because you know the, the place is just booming, right? The growth of the area, and new neighborhoods are going up, and so we would try to find these people. And the maps weren't in the maps, uh, the the streets weren't in the Matsco. We couldn't find them. So then the day came. Mr. Hunsberg said, "Look, Pastor, I have this. It's called a Garmin." Do you remember? And you would punch it in, and it would take you to the place you were supposed to go, except for one little problem. Do you remember? The Garmin was outdated, too, in how long, right? New, new streets, new homes, you punch it in, and it would send you out in the middle of a field, and you'd be going, what in the world are we doing out here? But now we've come. We've arrived. We've got Siri. We have Cortana. We have everything we need to find. You just speak into it. It was Matt Mon. We were out on calls. And Matt would say, watch this, Pastor. Blah, 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 speak the address. And it would take us right there. It was amazing. Have you ever had that occasion where you're going and you're thinking you're going to get there and all of a sudden that directional device gets cursed? And you say, what in the world? That's not what I expected. Isn't that the story this morning? Women go out to the tomb and they didn't find what they expected. They found something just spectacular. Two men dressed in white and then with a question, the Easter question of the day. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? To which, if I were with the women, I would have answered, well, where else would he be? But certainly their answer was more one of what huge difference is this going to make? You see, the women know, as you do, that on Good Friday they saw their Lord die. They saw his side pierced with the, with the sword. They saw the blood flow out mingled with blood and water. They saw Jesus taken down off the cross with Nicodemus. And, and Joseph of Arimathea, they saw Jesus placed into the tomb. They saw the stone rolled in front of the tomb. And maybe they had even gotten the news about the enemies of Jesus that had had it sealed. And then they had the soldiers guarding the entrance to that tomb with that big heavy stone in the front. They saw all of that. That's what they expected to find on Easter morning. But when they got to the tomb, what did they find? Well, they found no soldiers... They found no Savior, and even they found the stone moved. And then they looked in. How much was a one-minute commercial worth in the Super Bowl this last year? If you divide that, $2 million dollars. A one-minute commercial on the Super Bowl. You divide that, 30 seconds, a million bucks. Divide that, 15 seconds, half a million bucks. Sometimes the little things are really important, aren't they? Worth a lot. They looked in the tomb and they saw something they didn't expect to see. They saw the grave clothes there piled up and Jesus not in it. 
But they saw the burial cloth, the one that covered his face, neatly folded and off to its side. And that told them something that, that said if someone had come to steal Jesus' body, would they have taken the time to so neatly fold that napkin? And oh, you've read the email that have been floating around, haven't you, about the burial cloth. Careful about those because they're not all true. What is true is they saw an empty tomb. What is true is they saw the two men dressed in white. And the two men dressed in white wanted the women to remember, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. And I do wonder what tone of voice they had. Were they a little bit chiding? You know, there are two of them, so they might have been, you know, <laughs> probably not. Are they a little bit perturbed? Don't you know? Well, of course the angels know. They're in the face of God all the time. They, they never sin. They know everything perfectly. And don't they expect us to know perfectly? Yeah, maybe. Or do you think they were calm, quiet, and gentle? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. I wonder if their tone might have been one of reflection to say, do you remember what Jesus told you when you were with him up in Galilee? Do you remember how Jesus had said, uh, he began to teach him and then he said, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. It's like following the garment. Boom, boom, boom. Connect the dots and you'll get there. I don't blame the women any more than I would blame us. I, I think we would have much more sympathy toward those women than perhaps the angels did. Because we know what it's like to be a sinner. We know what it's like to doubt. We know what it's like to have our hearts ripped apart by death of a loved one. We know what it's like. And it hurts. And for the tears, we can't see clearly. For, for the heart that wells up inside of us and it's ready to burst and we don't know what else to do, we can't blame the women for expecting to find a dead Jesus. But they went. They went because they loved him. They went because they hated the way they buried him without being able to wrap his body properly with the spices. They loved him. There's a lesson for us there. When we have a loved one that leaves our journey with us here on earth and enters into heaven, we don't stop loving them because they're alive with Jesus. And so as the women went to the tomb and the angels asked them, just, can you remember? Can you remember what he told you when you were with him on the way? And oh, how they must have thought, yes, I want to believe. But you see, there's this elephant in the room. Jesus was dead. And we know that dead people don't move. Until the angels brought them something that changed everything. It was the word. It was the word of Jesus that changed everything for them. And then the women, when they realized, well, he's not dead, but he's alive, Run to go tell the disciples. And of course, when the disciples heard the news, they thought the women who were hysterical, they didn't want to hear of it. Perhaps we could even say the women were ridiculed for believing that Jesus rose from the dead. Ooh, ouch. If you have been so brave to tell your friends or your co-workers or your neighbors, yes, I believe in a Jesus that died and actually rose from the dead, you might face ridicule. Or if you find yourself stressed because of the pressures of life and you find yourself uh, facing great troubles and you might actually doubt the promises of God, then ouch, the angels need to come and remind us again. The Jesus that came to us and promised to us that he is alive is the same Jesus that says he wants to be a part of us so that we can live even though Jesus died. So that when we die, we get to live with him. Don't let the stresses, don't let the troubles, don't let the hurts, don't let the persecutions rob you of the comfort that you have in Jesus. 
Oh, I know the way it goes. Um, we might try to cope in all other ways with the stresses and troubles of life. Uh, we might e even try to deaden those stresses and those troubles of life with what the world has to offer. But I'm here to tell you that what the world has to offer will only end in death. Life comes when we listen to the word that Jesus proclaims. To that powerful word that made the difference in the lives of these women. So when they heard he's not here, he has risen, they believed Jesus came and did what he promised he would do. It does make all the difference in the world. And all too often when our, our faith is weak, when we're facing the difficult times of life, we just complicate it all the more with worries and, and more difficulties. But I get to tell you something this morning. I have the privilege to proclaim to you what is the most simple message that you need to hear. We call it the gospel. Maybe it's too simple. And maybe that's why it's hard to believe that Jesus had to be handed over into the hands of sinners, that Jesus had to die on the cross, that Jesus had to rise from the dead. But that's the power. Can you see Jesus now in heaven, in his right hand, holding all authority in heaven and earth, holding all power, everything he needs to comfort you, everything he needs to guard you, everything he needs to strengthen you. That's what made the difference in the lives of these women. That's how they could go forward in their proclamation to the disciples. That's how they could go because even, even in the middle of their stress, even in the middle of their sadness, Jesus comes with the gospel through the messengers that he sent from heaven, angels themselves, to say, it hasn't changed. It's still the same Jesus who did exactly what he said he was going to do. Isn't it the height of arrogance for us to say, no, God, I don't want the gospel. No, God, I want to do it my way. No, God, I don't want to hear it in your church. I don't want to read it on my own. I want to do it my way. What? It's a height of arrogance for us to say, I don't have to change God. You do. And so Jesus came. He came to those women through the message of those angels to assure them that he was the one that would make the eternal difference for their lives. If you're like me, you have run into those days, even weeks, where you wonder if really hearing the word of God is all that important. I mean, I've been hearing it since I was born. Parents drug me to Sunday school. And they drug me to worship. They sent me off to school Is it really that important? I'm glad I've been here 17 years so that I can read this to you and you'll never know who it is. This, um, every once in a while I get a letter in the mail from folks and uh, some of them I save. This one I save. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Just this excerpt. Really it was only because I was lazy. Well, really not. That's too easy of an excuse. It really was the hardness of my heart and the crazy ideas that came to my mind that said, if I stay away from church, if I quit going to church, if I quit making it a priority in my life to put the preaching of God's word first, then somehow or another I'll be better off. How foolish it was of me to ignore God and to come up with my own ideas to try and cope. Pastor, I'm so happy I'm back again. They got the message of the angel. They got the message of Jesus. It's not all that complicated. It has to do with the promise. Promise of Jesus that came to be our Savior. The promise of Jesus who said, I will die for you because in my death you will have life. 
For Jesus who came to say, I am the Son of Man that must be delivered over in the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Jesus proclaims the same message to us. It's Jesus for me. It's Jesus for us. We're not looking for another way. We're not looking for another route. We're not going to listen to what the world has to offer. That will end in a dead end. But we have the promise of Jesus himself who died for us, was buried, and on the third day rose again. It really is that simple, isn't it? On this Easter morning, to remember. To remember that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. To remember that in Jesus Christ we have forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternity. I just can only imagine what is going to be the next step in directional devices. Mark my words, if I'm around 17 years from now, I'll go back to this and find out what the next greatest thing is going to be. Maybe some thing in the sky, you know, some virtual map that pops up in front of your eyeballs or something and tells you where everybody is. Maybe we're there already with... Anyway, to the point. You have come here this morning to hear the message. The message that Jesus is alive. So I hope you did not come here to find the living among the dead, but that you would find God's people who are living among the living here and in eternity for Jesus' sake. Amen. Please stand. Lord Jesus, because you are alive, we have new life. Our sins are forgiven and we stand before you as your dearly loved brothers and sisters and heirs of eternal life. We look forward, dear Jesus, because of your death and re resurrection, we look forward to our eternal life with you in heaven. Amen. Let's be seated. Our usher will pass out the guest register and receive your offer. It has pleased Almighty God to remove from this veil of tears to himself in heaven the soul of Linda Hanks. Uh, we will gather on Tuesday for the internment at Rest Haven in Rockwall at 10 a.m. And then after the internment, we will have a memorial service at Calvary at 1130. And it is good for us to ask the Lord to comfort the family during this time of grief, especially with the hope of the resurrection. Let's stand and pray.
Lord Jesus, we rejoice that your tomb is empty. We praise you because you have swallowed up death forever, O Lord of life. Keep us all in faith. Remind us of our baptism when we were baptized into your death and resurrection. Drive sin out of all of our hearts. Strengthen us to resist the devil's temptations. Fill us with Easter light so that the world can see by our lives that you have given us life that lasts forever. Lord of life, through your angel, you invited the women at Jesus' empty tomb to tell Peter and the apostles about his resurrection. Give us hearts so filled with thanks that we do not keep the good news to ourselves, but tell it to the people in our lives and joyfully support the proclamation of the gospel all over the world. Lord of life, give your care and courage to pastors and missionaries around the world. Wherever their me the message of your son's death and resurrection is proclaimed, create faith in the hearts of the unbelievers and bring them from death to life. Ensure that the message of Christ crucified and risen for us sinners is purely and faithfully proclaimed throughout your church all over the world. Guide us and our leaders to serve your will and give all of us joy in doing your work. Lord of life, guide the leaders of our land and the leaders of the countries. Give them wisdom so that they use their authority to protect the helpless and care for all people. Bring an end to all hatred and war. Give us peace. Watch over those who serve in the military, their families, and keep them from harm. Give your comfort to those who must spend these holy days apart from those they love. Lord of life, we praise you for your care in your lives and in the lives of the people we love. We thank you for the gift of marriage. Make all marriages among us reflections of Christ's gracious love for his bride, the church. Bless our families with your affection and guidance. And Lord of life, you promised to wipe away tears from all faces. So we pray that you'd be with the sick and the recovering, especially Mark Barker's mother, Katie, recovering from her knee surgery, Bonnie Peterson and Anita Shipley, and others that we know and love. Give them the peace that comes from having the resurrection life of Jesus. And if you know it to be best, give them healing also. Watch over those who live in poverty and be with those recovering from natural disasters. Provide good weather for our crops and give us thankful hearts for all your undeserved goodness to us. Lord of life, today we remember with love those who have fallen asleep in Jesus, especially Linda Hanks. Now fill our hearts and the hearts of her family with the hope of the resurrection of all flesh. Give us true repentance and a confident faith, believing that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day for us. And hear us, loving Father, for the sake of your Son, who was crucified for us, but now is alive, living and reigning with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, as we join together and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn. Hymn number fifty one fifty five.
Christ our Lord is risen again. Christ has broken death's strong chain. Hark the angels shout for joy, singing evermore on high. Alleluia. He who gave for us his life, who for us endured the strife, is our paschal lamb today. We to sing for joy and say Alleluia. He who bore all pain and loss, comfortless, In glory now on high, pleads for us and hears our cry, Alleluia. He whose path no records tell has descended into hell. He the strong man armed as bound. And in highest heaven is crowned, Alleluia. He who slumbered in the grave is exalted now to save. Now through Christendom it rings that the Lamb is King of Kings. Alleluia. Now he bids us tell abroad how the lost may be restored, how the penitent forgiven, how we too may enter and O Lord God, our strength, our song, and our salvation, you fulfilled your promises by the res resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Make us instruments of your peace as we bring the good news of hope and new life to those around us. And now, having been refreshed by the resurrection gospel, guide us in the use of all that you have entrusted to us, our time, our talents, our treasures, to proclaim Christ crucified for our justification and Christ risen for our assurance. With happy hearts, we come before you in worship and praise. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you peace. Amen. We'll join together in the last hymn, number 150.
Lamb has blood. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Sinless in the sinner's stand. Oh, hallelujah. Christ is risen today, we cry. Now he lives no more to die. Oh, hallelujah. Victim undefiled. Oh, hallelujah. God and sinners reconciled. Oh, hallelujah. While in strange and awful strife, oh, hallelujah, met to gather death and life, oh, Welcome all of you to the sunrise service and what we have been smelling now we get to enjoy. Uh, let's 